Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you think you are, or seem to think you are. Let us all come into this moment now, remembering that the only time that is, is now. And just let everything of any kind of distraction that enters your mind or awareness, let it go. And just choose to be present in this moment now. And breathe. So we are with you, we are here, and you are as well. The reason we start each session like this is because it is important to let go of the busyness of your day going to go, depending not, well, I'll say this, no matter what time you think that it is, whether it be early or later, let it all go. Just release anything that does not flow with being in the present moment and breathe. At this time, as it always is, it is a time to become more aware and more awake to the truth of you, which has nothing to do with the world that you perceive at all. In fact, the world that you perceive, that you think that you are in, you are not in at all in truth. There is no world. This is a dream. And you are the dreamer of the dream and not the figure in the dream, meaning you are not a victim of the world. You are the mind that perceives the world that you believe you are in. And also, how you perceive depends on which mind you choose to look to. You have two parts to your mind. You have your right mind and your wrong mind. When you are feeling at peace with what is, no matter what seems to be going on around you, then you have chosen your right mind. That means accepting what is, you see. That doesn't mean pretending that what you perceive as going on around you in the world that you believe is going on is not, meaning you're not pretending that you don't believe it when you do. Does that make sense to everyone? Well, that becomes a spiritual bypassing, you're not going to look at your reactions to what you perceive at all, because you're going to pretend that you have risen above it, though you have not. But you can smile at that, and smile at yourself, and know that you're not alone in that. And that is quite obvious, if you look around you, the state of the world, or what you think is the world you see, the world you think is outside of you and your mind and etc., is not at all, but you're not alone in thinking that same thing. If you were, there would be no world really. Does that make sense? There has to be a bit of an agreement that what you seem to think you see and perceive is actually there. If no one believed that it, there was anything there, you wouldn't have a world. But you constructed it so well and so thoroughly that you made certain that you would believe it. And why? Why did you make something like that up? Well, you wanted to test yourself, see if you could grow exponentially. This world, this dream, is a classroom. It is a schoolhouse. You said, I will go to school and learn what I will perceive as the hardest lessons. Because I will believe in separation when there is no separation at all. And there will be so many seeming others that believe the same that they kind of 
solidifies that in my mind. But what we want you to know is now is you've got to start releasing on that rather than holding on to it as a truth, you see. What seems to be true of the world is not truth, you see. Capital T truth has nothing to do with the world. Capital T truth isn't in the world, you see. There is nothing in the world that is really true. There are things that seem to be so, and those are facts. That's worldly affairs and so on and so forth. But facts do not equal truth. Does that make sense? So what we're talking about right now, right here, is something metaphysical, you see. In the world of physicality, facts are truth, you see. But you're really not of the world of physicality. You aren't physical at all. In fact, in truth, there is no body. You are not a body. You are a spirit, which is eternal. You see, the body is not. So, this is a time to use your mind rather than your emotions. Let go of your reactions rather than getting on board with them. Reactions are always of the ego mind, which is from your wrong mind. And what you seem to think upsets you in the world isn't in the world, but in your mind. Does that make sense to everyone? So, well, we could go on and on and on, and we probably will in some way, but we are aware there are questions. We can go more in depth within those questions. The first question is from Kate. And Kate asks, as I study ACIM and bring the teachings into my daily life, my state of mind has grown more and more peaceful. Yet, I have a physical symptom that is becoming more painful and is beginning to distort part of my body. If the body is a reflection of the mind, why would the symptom continue to worsen as my mind grows more peaceful? Am I missing something or blocking something? We will get into that now. First of all, we're going to say ACIM is a course of miracles for those who are not aware of that. So you were saying that you have physical symptoms that do not seem to be alleviated, but seem to be more exacerbated as you go along with practicing the teachings of the course. What you feel as if is though your body should reflect that. But remember, you are not the body. You see, and the body is a classroom as well as a communication device. What you could be missing is the taking serious of it, you see. Bodies seem to have symptoms. They are not real, nor are they true, meaning they are not eternal and they are not really you. So the thing to do in this circumstance is, okay, the body seems to be having symptoms that are very painful, but rather than react to the symptoms, I'm going to look upon the symptoms and just forgive. Say, the symptom is simply coming up for me to look at with the Holy Spirit, which means to forgive the thought and belief that this can be true. And the symptom may not necessarily go away, but I, as a mind, can remain at peace no matter what. You see. Does that make sense? It does. So just keep doing that just exactly over and over. So there's no 
just wanted to be sure there wasn't something that I wasn't seeing. I feel like things come up and I see it and I kind of let it go. But I thought, is there something that I'm not getting? But it's just a matter of just keep on going. Keep on going with forgiveness, you see. Okay. So whenever you react to, meaning you get upset about, or you judge the pain, then you are falling back into the trap of the ego, you see. Okay. So just be patient with it and be kind to your, to your body, even to yourself. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. A lot of the times, we'll just say a lot of the times, that can happen with those on the spiritual path. There will be physical symptoms that arise in the experience of the one dreaming. And that is an opportunity for you to choose how you show up to the pain. Not believing in the pain as being real or as any kind of punishment in any way, but just it is what it is. We have talked about this before. The world is not a beautiful place. In fact, it was made to have contrast so that you could grow, you see. You aren't made you aren't made to make an ephemeral world eternal. And thank God for that. And you were not made or created. You were not created to make this seeming place your home. Your home is in the mind of God. And that is forever. The next question is from Mara. And Mara asks, I have a question about the capital self that God created. My sense is one of being more present, aware, in peace, in joy, and one with all I meet. <clears throat> in A Course in Miracles, you said, there, there will come a time when images have all gone by and you will see you know not what you are. It is to this unsealed and open mind that truth returns unhindered and unbound. Is there anything more you can say about this, quote unquote, unsealed and open mind receiving truth without limits? There is nothing we could, we could say in words, but we know that you feel it. So go with that feeling and just trust. It cannot be explained away you see it just simply is and if you tune into that thought of isness it is expansive it is eternal you cannot put words to it that is what we speak of you also said quote god this magnitude is beyond the scope of this curriculum it is not necessary we dwell on anything that cannot be immediately grasped. There is a borderland of thought that stands between this world and heaven. It is not a place, and when you reach it, it is apart from time. This borderland is just before the gate of heaven. This is the journey's end, unquote. I think the borderland is where we grow more aware and more aligned with God the true self, etc., by means of your wonderful teaching of looking at which guide, which teacher we are following and choosing again if we're not in peace. Am I correct? In a sense, yes. But the borderland really is a transitional seeming area, quote unquote, because there is no space or time. So that's just language you can understand. So it is a transitional place 
which you know is not a place because you believe so fully in your identity in the world that if we ripped your identity from you and threw you right back into the eternal you would take quite some time to come back about after being actually thrown into fear does that make sense it does yes and so you have to go through this process of undoing and that process will take as long as it takes for you to continue to release until you simply let it go altogether. Yeah. But along with um, feeling not an image, there's, there's hardly any more fear, regardless of what I'm looking at. And I'm just so grateful for this teaching. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's an important part there is the image, you see. Because it is the image the ego clings to, and the ego is the you. When you choose the ego, you see. So we would say the image is the ego. And it's very frightening to the ego to let the image go, because that means that it is gone. And you wake up and realize it wasn't ever there before at all. You just thought it was. It can be quite alarming. But like you said, as you continue to let go of the image, the thought you have about yourself that is not true, the easier that transitional period will go. You don't have to wait until your body is failing and dying. You can do it right now. In fact, we encourage everyone to start doing it right now if they aren't already. Or if you aren't already. And if you are, just keep going with that. Thank you. Thank you. This next question is from Arye. And Arye asks... I'm going through an immensely hard time in my life, and I'm finding it is almost impossible to stay positive and have hope for the future. It just feels like life won't let me live normally. What is the point of continuing to try to be hopeful? Well, that's a good question, because hope actually is not needed when you have fully come into total awareness of the truth of your being. There is no hope because hope speaks of duality, you see. You hope that things will get better. You hope that you will wake up, etc. Meanwhile, the truth is everything is always good and oneness just is. And so there is no hope, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does make sense. And I've seen that directly before, but it, it I, I, I seem to be terrorized right now by these like um, visions and nightmares of like some awful test that's gonna come in the future that'll just be like horrific. And I can't stop, like it's just causing so much fear and I can't stop it. Okay, mm -hmm. well, it's time to begin to Look at that fear and really say to yourself, what if I am not a body? And actually you could say, since I am not a body, I am an eternal spirit. What about these visions is there to fear? That which is eternal cannot be touched by anything that comes from fear. In fact, Fear does not exist in truth. And what you are stands with truth, as truth, in truth. And in the world of duality, it feels as though truth is somewhere far off and inaccessible, when in truth, it's already you, you see. 
Nothing can harm the eternal in you. And all of those visions are simply to convince you there's something to fear. Mm. Because I mean, there's that part of you that is fearful, knows that if you see that those visions are completely false, and the truth of you is magnificent, is absolutely imperturbable and eternal, then that part of you that fears would disappear. That's awesome. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome, because that is you in truth. So when you have those visions, remind yourself, I am light. Mm -hmm. And that which is light cannot be touched by darkness, because darkness ceases to exist in the face of light. And we're going to tell you that those visions are going to try very hard to prove it, prove the light wrong. Hmm. Just know you're getting somewhere if it starts kicking back and try to laugh at that. Hmm. I'm sorry, can you say that last line one more time? Try to laugh hmm. at the fear. Try to laugh at the darkness. And then be patient as you let it be corrected which is to show you that it isn't there and was never there in truth. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are not alone. And if you ever feel that you need what you would call reinforcement of any kind, just remember that reinforcement is within you. Mm -hmm. And that light and you are one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Jesus. You're very welcome, and thank you. That's very important, actually, during these quote-unquote times when duality seems to be very much kicking up with all of its distractions and fanfare and extre extre extreme emotions, reactions, Pictures of violence and pictures of fear. It's just coming up because it is time to look at it and call it false. You see, all of it, everything that you perceive in the world that does not speak of truth, which is love, forgiveness, and light, is not at all. These are murmurings, shadows. They cannot stand. The light has won because there is nothing but light in truth. The darkness is confusion. All confusion can be corrected. This next question is from Carol, who isn't here today. But Carol asks, I would like to ask Jesus what to tell my six-year-old granddaughter when she asks, how do you know God is real? I told her that God wrote it in our hearts and that God, not us, created us. Is there a better response, do you think? She will no doubt continue to wonder. That's a very good response. Just tell her to do this. Take a moment, be silent. Put the intention to touch God in the fore of your mind, and you will feel God in that quiet space within, letting go of all thoughts and distraction, any arguments in your mind. Just release it all, and there is God. See if you can feel God, because you will. Be patient with the process. Keep going with the process. 
those who seek will find. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Again, with the world, there are, of course, in the world, lots of things that seem to be going on that will do all within its seeming power to wrench you from truth or wrench truth from you by telling you lies, you see. In fact, the whole world is a lie. So you can look at the world and call it a lie. Because it is ephemeral, not eternal. And what we want you to know is that nothing in the world can touch you, cannot touch your soul. Your soul is limitless, is boundless, and is eternal. And that will never change. Don't believe the lies that are being fed to you from the world, you see. From the world, by the world. And we're telling you right now, this has always been that way, but it seems to be getting more and more because of the way things are being communicated. Meaning, things such as social media and the quickness of how things are delivered these days. Okay, in the past, these things have always been gone. These all these things have been going on. You see, this hasn't had this platform of instantaneousness. Say a thousand years ago, there was still the same thought system that is, is going on now. It has not changed, and the wrong-minded thought system has never increased, nor has it decreased over time. It has always stayed the same. So that same energy that you perceive from that wrong-minded thought system has not become more so, save the fact that you get it more instantaneously. That does not make it more powerful. Your mind is way more powerful than that. You have to look at it and say, this is just another part of the distraction, another part of the world. I don't have to believe it. I can turn my TV off. I can turn my phone off, in fact. I can step away from this constant interaction with the unre unreality of this world. And I can go within instead and remember who I am. And in fact, remember what I am. That is something you can do at any time. There's no off button for God. There is an off button to the ego. And it doesn't feel that way, and it's going to resist that statement. It's going to pretend like it's much bigger than that. It will seem like it is, but it's not. What we want to remind you of is that all the pushback that you may encounter as you go forward in your journey with truth, the more solid your journey is becoming. Because the ego will always overreact when something like truth appears, you see. It will do anything in its small, calling it small, seeming power to squelch all that is true. But you don't have to believe that. You can know that truth is beyond this world, cannot be touched by this world, no matter what. So. The next question is from Gay, and Gay asks, Dear Jesus, what happens to those who don't know about you and God in this lifetime? 
What happens after their souls depart this lifetime? Would you encourage me to tell my family who doesn't know about you that they can call on you? Or if they don't want to do that while they're still alive, can I tell them they can call on you after they depart? Would this be something you would encourage me to do? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Aaron, with much gratitude and love. Absolutely. That's always something you can do all the time. Just know that those who do not fully come into awareness in this seeming lifetime have nothing to fear. They will simply be corrected on the other side. And that correction is very kind and loving. What that really is is a, an embrace, you see, a welcoming back, which is really a remembrance that you never left. And that you can say, what a dream. I thought that was real. I thought that I was lost. But as the saying goes, and as is true, you are found. But actually, you've never really been lost. So. You're always welcome to remind your family and friends that love is real and that will never change. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Love does not need to be believed to be real because it is real, you see, and it is eternal. That which is eternal does not need to be reminded that it is eternal. It simply is, and that is without words. So we cannot quite put it into words. So you just experience it as beingness or isness, eternalness. And that is you. Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome. I was just um, thinking about, you know, here in the Western world, um, people hear about you and God so easily. But in the country where there's no God and no Jesus exists, pretty much, I was just wondering what happened to those souls that never heard of you? never heard of God ever, you know, do they, after they left, do they um, go to the dark place, even though they will be told about you later, about God later? No, actually, simply, they will remember. Oh. Once you transition, you simply come into total knowingness. Okay. So all that you did not seem to recall whilst in the dream you remember completely and fully when you transition. And then what happened to the, uh, them, to their soul, when they decide to come back again? Perhaps. Would they remember? Of course they would remember. That's what knowingness is. Perhaps they will decide to return. Perhaps they will not. You see. But okay. all will be welcome back because they never left. You never left. Hmm. But how did we? So those that keep coming back is just by our own choice that we want to come back, or do yes. we have unfinished um, relationship with other souls that we want to come back and leave it out again and do Probably. it again? Probably, but it is a choice made by the soul, you see. So it's not something that you have to do. It's just that we'll say that the mind or the soul can be very almost perfectionist, we'll say. It didn't go quite exactly fully the way 
I wanted that to go. Not that anything happened that was wrong, but I just could have done that just a little bit better. So I'll go back in and I'll do another scenario of the same thing, same content, but I'll make a different choice that time, you see. And then when we get here on the earth, we forgot about our, <laughs> what we were supposed to do and we get entangled in it again. Yes. <laughs> and it's good to laugh. It really is good to laugh. In fact, you you go back, so to speak, seemingly go yeah. back because you never left and you say, I think I'd like to do that one more time. Just one more time, I'll do it. And I'm laughing right now because I know that was rough. Maybe this time I can really nail it, so to speak. Yeah. So you're always lighthearted, you see. Even when you make the decision, I'm going to go back into that dream. It's not going to be the same, so to speak. Meaning you're not going to go to the same body or location necessarily. You definitely won't be going to the same body. But you laugh because you say to yourself, I can and I will deceive myself again. And that's silly. Maybe this time the, the deceiving aspect won't last as long. Perhaps this time I can remember more quickly and stay aware longer. You see, I see. Yeah. Why do people um, choose to come here and not knowing you at all? Because knowing God at all. Because they wanted the experience. What would that be like? Huh. What would that be like? Because I know that I will never be truly lost. <laughs> and you're so lost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're very welcome. I love you. We love you, too. Thank That's you, great. Aaron. And you're very welcome. Yeah, it's funny. You see, you never left God, really. You believe you did, but you didn't. You're, in quotes, tethered to God. You can't leave God. So you said, I wonder what it would be like to to have the worst experience, the, the most drastic of separation experiences, just because I know that it can't actually happen. Well, we, the only thing we'd say is, you really want to do that? Who knows? Who knows? And truly, this is all for growth. Soul expansion. Bruce, who couldn't be with us today, asks, is the ascension going to happen late, ra later rather than sooner? Is it true that the whole process could take up to a thousand years, or is it more likely to occur a lot sooner? Sorry, I will not be able to be live today. I would also like to take advantage of this moment to express my love to you and all the members here. Well, thank you very much. And of course, that love is extended back to you, as you know. So the question was one that revolved around the idea of time, and in fact, linear time. And so none of it is true, okay? Because to say that it might take a thousand years means that time is truth. It's not going to take time. You just believe it will, you see. And it will take as long as you choose to let it go. Meaning, how long is it going to take for you to wake up? We're saying that lightly, don't beat yourself up if you haven't woken up completely yet. That's okay. The process is called kindness, gentleness, and learning. You see. So, ascension really is 
moving up, so to speak, though there is no up, down, sideways, etc. There's no linear anything. Ascension is rising above what is not real, you see. It's actually waking up from the unreality of the world and saying this is silly. And I'm changing my mind right now because nothing can hold me here unless I let it. Meaning you've come to the awareness that everything you perceive is a product of your own mind, you see. No one is doing anything to you. That's you doing it to you because you chose to. You wanted to get upset, so you're upset. No one on the seeming outside world did anything to make you upset. You chose right away to be upset. Is it going to take a thousand years? If it does, it's because you chose that. But lighten up. There is no time. What is a thousand years to eternity? If you know what we mean. Bring the darkness to the light means it will be shined away. Bring time to timelessness, it no longer exists. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Meaning there is no time. So ascension has nothing to do with time. Ascension is a process of your mind choosing to go higher. Higher in the sense of letting go of what you once believed to be true and real and setting yourself free, you see. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Neil asks, Dear Jesus, when my son John passed away two Christmases ago, I asked you where he went, and you replied that he didn't go anywhere. And after listening to you since that time, I now think that my question should have been, where am I at this present time? Maybe I need to be more aware of Johnny's world, which is oneness with God right now. Is this possible for me to do? It is. It's possible. And it's true that, that you are the one that needs to remember that you want to be in that mind of oneness, you see. That's a choice you make all the time, every day, day in, day out. It's the same as peace over conflict, love over fear, and etc. Mindfulness rather than mindlessness. But yes, indeed. Keep going towards oneness and the realization that you already are. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, indeed. And this question, this next question is from Pam. And Pam asks, a while back I had a dream in which I heard a beautiful voice say to me, come home. I'm pretty sure this did not mean for me to leave the body. Can you tell me more about this? You said earlier in this session that my, quote, home, unquote, is in the mind of God. And where did the voice come from? Who might it be? Well, the voice came from within your own mind, the mind that you do share with God, you see. So that did come from the mind of God, which you share with God, you see. And yes, indeed, you want to put your focus on returning to the thought of God as much as you possibly can all the time. When you find that your mind has wandered away, forgive it and turn it back. Look to God, always. Did that answer your question?
there was another part to that. Well, it was just about um, come home. Come I, home. I actually heard a few other things that I was told to. Um, I had to let go of any negativity. I had to let go of negativity. And um, I had to love myself. And I also saw a, um, a license plate that somehow without saying, you know, had the letters like you might see on a vanity plate that said, let go and let God. So I, it was all interrelated, but that what I really didn't understand was come home. Yes. Well, come home really does mean put your mind back to God, you see. And let go of the negativity means cease to the best of your ability to stop, you see, judging. Because really, what will really knock you out is judgment, you see. So you want to catch your mind in the, in the midst of the judgment, which is an opportunity that you can have all the time. That's to anybody out there, so to speak. Whenever you find yourself looking at anything in the world of the world, through the mind of the world, you know that you're judging. What you want to do is recall your mind back to God and say, I don't have to let my mind be influenced by this at all. In fact, my mind, I can choose to be above all of this because I am, you see. Come home means do that rather than playing with the cards of the world. Does that make sense? Yes, and um, I'm beginning to feel uh, uh, that it's it's getting too painful, not all the time, but so a lot of times it's becoming too painful. To, there's so much, um, especially if you are looking at social media, um, the amount of, um, I'm just going to say negativity there. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, um, it's just becoming too too painful. And it makes sense because it is so far off base from God that of course it would be painful, you see. Meaning, if it is not true, it's going to hurt, you see. And what you seem to be witnessing is a play of pain. But you don't have to go along with the pain. You don't have to wonder about the players of the pain, you see. You can simply step, step back and observe and then release all the feelings that come up, your reactions, and so on, whilst you are looking. Or even if it just comes up seemingly out of nowhere. So the good, the, what would be a good way of handling it is um, to, when I look at it, and if it feels painful, then I know it's not true. Exactly. And that helps me to, that can help me step back and remember the truth. That's right. Okay. Like that's the best way to do it. Years ago, when we were first coming through to the channel, when she was aware of us and she would have a painful thought, we said, if it hurts, it's not true. And she used that for a long time. But as the world goes, forgetting happens. So this is a good reminder to all that if it hurts, it can't be true. You see? So what you are observing is illusion. Illusion hurts. 
but you are not illusion you see we're talking about what you really are is not the illusion personality yes but your true self is not you see so what you want to do is step back and step into your true self and ask to see it with your true self who will tell you it feels that bad because it's not true thank you because i i know that even if a, even if a, if they see a thumbnail that uses you know the like click baby type yes indeed things um that even if it's someone i might agree with that about i just, i don't want to i don't want to listen to an attack on someone right. it doesn't matter who it is i just don't want to listen to an attack exactly clickbait is exactly what it is bait mm -hmm. you see what do you bait you bait what you want to kill really mm -hmm. so all right thank you you're welcome don't kill yourself <laughs> we're, we're teasing because you can't really do that anyway yeah that's good to know <laughs> yes and you remember you're eternal so all right thank you you're very welcome we appreciate that topic because it's important to remember that anything that hurts and it may not feel as a hurt to you okay but if something is so aggressive towards anyone that is an untruth as well you see if it is not love then it is not true if it is not forgiveness then it is false we're talking about forgiveness in the true sense which means what you're looking at is an illusion do not invest in it or you'll end up with nothing that's the end the end of the session wow it's been a wonderful time with all of you we appreciate you all beyond words as always beyond expression even but we are with you always tune in to the eternal as often as you can i'm looking at the news remember the eternal say to yourself what i'm looking at is false because nothing here is true we love you and we are always with you and thank you all all is well always in truth namaste